She was one of the organisers for this event and I'm sure she'll be absolutely thrilled with the turnout that we've got for these people who care so much about this area that we live in. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of this land, the Garrigal people, and thanking Neil Evans for his wonderful uh, welcome to country. I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. The suffering they endured at the time of white contact as a result of disease, violence and displacement is unimaginable. Yet today, the environment that we enjoy is testament to their custodianship over many thousands of years. However, in recent years, planning controls appear to have been unable to prevent a swath of overdevelopment in Pitwater. These developments are changing the very contours of this land. On environmentally precious sites, we are seeing residential blocks cleared of trees, sometimes 15 or more, some 100 or more years old. Then ex uh, excavations from boundary to boundary and four stories deep. This is destroying the natural beauty of this area and the tree canopy that provides habitat for local wildlife as well as cooling the area. The creek lines, such as the one at Palm Beach, shows the importance of the nature of the natural environment that we have in Pitwater. We know that the Pitwater LEP and DCP were very clear and consistent about protecting these landscapes. For example, with the 60-40 rule for site coverage. Is it new building techniques that are making previously unimaginable developments possible? Is it an influx of property owners with wealth who are pushing the boundaries? Perhaps a lack of compliance? Or is it the direct result of the removal of decision making being granted to councillors on DAs? At the May Council meeting, Miranda moved a motion asking for a, uh, a review of why these developments are occurring with the hope that this information could feed into the new LEP. This report was due within two months. However, I've now been told that councillors are, be, uh, are waiting to be briefed on August 9th. So many questions still remain about the future of Pitwater and the future of the new LEP. However, we know from council surveys that environmental protection is the highest priority for not just residents in Pitwater, but across the entirety of the Northern Beaches Council. So any existing weaknesses in the Pitwater LEP and DCP must be tightened up. CAB RPA President Catherine Kerr has organised a number of forums over recent months inviting architects, including Elizabeth Farrelly, to address residents about the sort of controls that are needed. She has also been exploring LEPs from other council areas. I hope Catherine can recap on these for you, like limits to excavations in conservation zones. It also appear, uh, appears that these zones will need to be included in the LEP to make them properly enforceable. Additionally, we need the council's tree canopy plan, which has been lingering unfinished since it went to public exhibition in 2018. Completed and better down. It must have a significant, tree register, a significant tree register and a strategy for protecting trees on private land where the greatest tree loss is occurring. We must also have protections for built heritage from the old stone cottages of Palm Beach and the Walter Burley Griffin House in Avalon to the 70s brick and timber bush retreats nestling among the Anger Foras and examples of post-World War II migration and farming heritage. <coughs> Pitwater Council has, put, uh, has already put together a list of places ready for heritage review in 2015 that was shelved because of the council merger. Then we also have open spaces like reserves, parklands and golf courses. We know that the council has knocked back tenders for the Avalon Golf Course, which lies within the 400 metre radius of the Avalon Centre. This must remain open space. And we need the council to be carrying out heritage studies to prepare for establishing heritage conservation areas in the LEP. These safeguard a range of uh, local features that can be uh, significant aesthetically, culturally, historically, scientifically, or environmentally. If we're to preserve this rich environmental and built heritage, I'd encourage residents to be ready to defend our territory. The council will soon release a report into the environmental zonings and I hope that as many people as possible will make submissions on it. Miranda will certainly be reading submissions, along with expert advice 
that they give councillors the evidence to argue their case. The current open space strategy is also up for exhibition, and there will be more, particularly the final LEP itself. Talk to your neighbours and your friends, because we know that the news will spread. And flood councillors with emails. When they receive hundreds of emails on an issue, like Miranda has on a couple of issues this year, it has an impact. Please speak about art, please speak at council meetings about planning or register and write a speech that a council staffer can read out on your behalf. And make use of social media and the wider media if you have the contacts. Post about inappropriate development and publicise great ones too. Look out for more meetings and more protests. Miranda knows of many residents who are ready to lie in front of bulldozers if need be. <laughs> Uh, also, Miranda wanted me to note that Demerge New South Wales is holding a protest outside of New South Wales Parliament House on the 9th of August uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. and that is calling for the demerge of plebiscites we saw recently to be stanted across all of the merge councils. Uh, so that's uh, available on Facebook if you're interested and can attend that event. Finally, you can begin by signing the petition to here today, which is being put together by Jenny Cullen. Thank you. Our two next speakers, our brother and sister architects, raised and educated in the bays and beaches of deep water, Sasha Su Lesuk, an associate and an award at an award, I need my glasses, at an award-winning architecture firm, currently involved in significant residential and public domain projects. Her brother Nick learned about building firsthand with his locally renowned architect parents, Nana and Stephen Lesuk. He now works as a landscape architect for an award-winning design firm on open spaces. <laughs> to speak to you today because to us Pitwater is a really, really incredibly special spot. So who are we, what do we do and why are we here? Our appreciation for the landscape and the built environment began well before our formal training in architecture and landscape architecture. Growing up in the base of Pitwater, we learned from a young age that designing in environments like ours requires a really thoughtful and considered approach. We went to school in Bayview, where our surrounding landscapes went from gullies and sand dunes to mangroves. After that, we went further afield, um, where we started to be introduced to more urban landscapes, where the connectivity between landscape spaces was through the public domain. From there, we went um, to UNSW, where we were fortunate enough to be taught by some incredible people in our profession, including um, Craig and Rick here. Um, they further emphasised that we need to always think about the context and landscape at the front of our minds when we're designing. Today, Nick and I, we both work for leading architects and landscape architecture firms, where we work on projects um, all the way from Canberra to Parramatta, to Newcastle, Port Stephens and Port Macquarie. It's very diverse. At the moment, I'm working on some really large uh, residential master plans which focus on the public domain space within them and how these connect to the landscape. And for me at the moment, I'm working on large city surrounding strategies through to open space park plans from Penrith through to his South Head master plan. Where our work overlaps is the public domain and its connection to both the surrounding landscapes, whether that's a city landscape or a bushland landscape, as well as the connection between the public domain space and its wider context. When Craig and Anna asked us to speak here today, we naturally gravitated towards thinking about what makes Pitwater so special and how we wanted to see Pitwater in our future. As the others have been saying today, Pitwater is a highly unique place that requires a unique design response. As local residents ourselves, we care about the preservation of Pitwater. We want to ensure that the quality of open space in the environment 
is retained for future generations. To us, pure water is a necklace that strings together the pearls of the landscape and community. From Palm Beach to Motor Vale, from Bayview to West Head, from the thundering, crashing ocean to the glass still bays, each area has a unique and distinct diversity. And this is what makes this place so special. So why do we live here? Like many of you here today, I have lived on the northern beaches for many years. I have been sailing not so much 70 years on pit water like Rick has, but for 20. You, have, you all have your reasons for being here and why you make pit water your home, your place to work, your place to spend time and your place to raise a family. Since being asked to do this talk, I have been thinking about what it makes, what makes pit water um, home for us and for you. For me, pit water is, a, um, is the only place I've called home. But when people ask me what makes this place so special, I usually respond with a different answer each time. Not that I'm bragging to my friends that saying that the best beaches are here, it's the greatest place to sail, and the community villages where I run into friends whilst doing the groceries. It's like the ocean, it's never the same time. It's never the same each time you look at it. I feel like there is a few key reasons for why people choose to live on the peninsula of Pipwater. One, a connection to place and the natural environment. Two, a connection to the familiarity with people and the community. And three, a sense of space and time slowing down. For most of us, we will be familiar to travelling afar or even just to the city and returning with that emphasis of exhaling as you arrive back to Pitwater. There is a sense of space and time slowing down as you arrive. What this says to me is that you cannot just label a place like Pitwater with one or, two, one or two key thoughts. Whether you are a person who swims on the ocean or sits on an escarpment to capture an outlook, there is something to capture everyone's spirit and imagination here. We all have a shared experience of connection to the incredible beauty of Pitwater. This sense of connection to the place binds the community with a shared perspective on Pitwater and is why many of you are here today in this room. So Pitwater is home to a unique variety of landscape typologies, <coughs> one that Craig and Rick has touched on today, providing an inspiration for design themes and strategies. Connecting with country is the binding principle that should inform the foundations of any ongoing changes. This appreciation for indigenous culture and the way the landscapes are incorporated into their beliefs and day-to-day -day lives is how we must begin to look forward to achieve a sustainable environment for the future. I'd like to think we already have a strong history of prioritising landscapes in our local development here in Pitwater. However, there are some examples, not to name, where this is not the case. We need to prioritise retaining our landscape, but it should not prevent ongoing building and change itself. We should use landscape to inform the built environment rather than the other way around. Um, Pitwater has such a strong community, and this is another reason that makes it so special. Whilst working overseas, I was inspired by other architects and how they spoke about community and architecture's place. They would often say that society is never the same, the world keeps changing, and it changes, and sometimes the changes are difficult to swallow. But architecture can be a mirror of those changes. It's the built environment's expression of those changes. So to me, architecture should tell the story of how people are living in that space. Good buildings and good place making bring community together, and that strengthens the community identity. These are the main points that I try to think about when I'm designing. So how do we evolve and how do we meet our ever-changing needs of the community around us without losing the thing, the essence of what makes pit water pit water? Don't get us wrong. We are not here standing before you today as we are working on a number of large state significant projects. But what we were trying to say is that um, we need a tailored approach to the water. Possibly not what's happening in DY. 
The work that Nick and I have been doing um, in Newcastle strikes us as a good example to express positive change. Newcastle is undergoing some significant development, but rather than development for a minute, let's think about it as significant evolution. This evolution is taking place to suit the growing needs of the community. There's a new light rail, airports, housing stock, new public domain spaces, and public domain that connects the community to the landscape. Community, the community up in Newcastle has a very strong voice, just like our own here in Pittwater. But alongside this strong voice is a set of rigorous steps to ensure that the change that they're making are positive changes. And when, most importantly, the changes are right. So when a project hits a certain scale, a certain height or cost value, or is in a certain area, um, it has to see and be reviewed by a certain panel of people. The group of people are reputable, they're respected, and they're design practitioners in various fields, including architects, landscape architects, urban designers, and the community. The primary objective of the group is to ensure that the designs are good. They keep people accountable to make sure design is suitable for the Newcastle community, to encourage sustainable design, and to ensure that the local landscape has been considered. This process makes sure that good design isn't exclusive. It needs to be inclusive and to be a crucial part of the evolution of the fabric of the place. This precinct here in Newcastle is a great example of the success of good design in this place. It's a multi-award winning project and it won awards specifically for how it responded to the surrounding context. At the heart of the project, it was the goal of rejuvenation and restoration. And the key was to create an atmosphere that respected the culture and the past while delivering for the needs of the community. It could be said that arguably projects like this facilitate upgrades to broader public domain spaces and help cater to the need for local community. So what is our vision for Pitwater in 2050? Building upon this idea of positive change and positive evolution, positive development, how do we see Pitwater in 2050? We see an evolution of Pitwater telling a story of the people here today. We have a vision that can be described through landscape as priority in the local development, sustainability becoming a key focus point. We think that Pitwater could become an exemplar for the rest of the northern beaches and even the wider context of Sydney City and beyond. As an example of how to deal with delicate and changing environments. It is a vision for how to respond to increased diversity of community and we think that Pitwater could set an example of how to preserve the essence of a place while engaging with and meeting the needs of the community. Big goals we know, but how do we do it? We think we need a really well-considered design excellence policy that's unique and very appropriate to pit water and its very many variations. We think we need a dedicated design review panel and we need to fill it with local people that know the essence and the uniqueness of pit water. But let's also put some people in the panel that know how to design good buildings. We should have key sustainability targets like green staff, neighbours and well rating and we should have strong, positive uh, community consultation that we're actually listened to. We should ensure that there's a high standard of design by mandating that registered design professionals are required at all levels from housing through to building our town centres. What we're trying to say here is we want to see if people want to stay the way it is. But we want to be able to cater the growing needs of the community and make this place a beautiful place for future generations to live as well. So let's be smart about the way that we design here. Let's push for better and really good evolution that we're proud of.